Hello friends, welcome to Feral Moon Designs, where today we're going to be starting a regularly returning series where I craft some of my favorite characters from 90s Nicktoons. Aren't you glad you watching? You watching? You watching Nick? Aren't you glad? You watching? You watching? You watching Nick? Being a child of the 80s, I had the privilege of growing up through the golden age of Nickelodeon, and whether by some modern existential crisis-fueled dive into nostalgia or otherwise, I recently found myself once again infatuated with these characters, and could think of no better way to tribute and remember some of my favorites than to make them out of clay and put them in an oven. Wow. Skanky. And so, to kick this series off, I felt it only appropriate to start with Nickelodeon's favorite spooky bunny, Ickis from Ah Real Monsters. To do this, I'll print out a few reference images, both fan art and official, especially appreciating the fan art depicting Ickis with a bunny tail, referencing the voice actor Charles Adler, who also voiced Buster Bunny from Tiny Toon Adventures, and leading to a running joke on the series where Ickis is mistaken for a small rabbit. We'll go ahead and plan out the armature, and we'll get our wire varieties ready to go, along with our tools and aluminum foil, and I will twist up the wire for the ear framework, and for the arms that I can go ahead and attach to the main structure, avoiding to uh, injure myself in the process. Ah! Now, taking extra caution not to further injure myself, we'll go ahead and complete that armature, lay it out to check it over and make sure it all looks right, and we can begin the process of adding clay. Now it's during this initial process that I'll go ahead and form at least the framework of the body and bulk it out, as well as adding clay along the legs and forming Ickes's curved elf-like feet, or at least a base for which we can build off of in the future. Once our bunny bone works for our Ickes base is complete, I can throw that in the oven for a quick cure that'll provide a solid foundation from which I can continue to sculpt our spooky little monster. From there, we can move on to the armature for the head, something I certainly didn't struggle with for some time and definitely didn't attempt multiple times over. This is actually the first attempt, promise. To do this, I'll eventually form a disc out of clay attached to a wire armature and throw that in the oven for a quick bake. From there, I can add more clay and bulk that out to the near football-esque shape of Ickes' head. Once I'm content with the general form of Ickes' head, I can then begin to add the eyes and check the fit and form of the ears to make sure I'm satisfied. And from there, with a general idea of where the eyes are going to be placed, I can roll out some clay and begin forming the mouth. Then using the straight edge of one of my utensils, I can add the teeth. From there, I'll double check the fit of the ears as well as the head to the body before moving on to continue sculpting and detailing Ickes' feet and the rest of his body as well. Now, given how often Ickes is mistaken for a bunny, outside of the large ears, I'm left to assume he has a fuzzy exterior. To achieve this, I'm going to use my ball stylus and go over his body, uh, making sure to overlap here and there to form what I feel is an adequate fur texture. Naturally, I'll repeat this process on the head and feet as well. And with our fuzzy face complete, it's time to add our previously formed eyeballs to the head and then roll out some snakes of clay and apply those right about halfway back the eyeballs themselves and then blend them in to form the eyelids. And once I'm done giving our favorite spooky bunny boy the gift of vision, we can move on to detail the lips where I'll add some cracks and grooves just to break up that smooth texture. 
From here, I'll throw the head in for a quick bake and it's time to move on to the ears. Now for this, I felt it was best to start with the framework, the exterior part of the line on the ears, if you will. And to do this, I thought it was best to just add that clay along that wire armature to form out the general shape. Of course, I'll repeat this process for both ears, and once the shape is complete, I'll go in with my ball stylus and add the fur texture to the ears themselves before putting those frames into the oven to cure as well. Now, with all of our pieces cured, I can go ahead and take our ear frames and check the positioning and fit before using my hand drill and drilling the holes where the ears and the head will fit into place. Using some super glue on the armature wire of the head, I can fit that into place in the hole I drilled into the body, which will hold it securely while I apply more clay for the neck and blend that into the body. It's during this process that I'll additionally add clay to the armature of the arms and trim those to size. Moving on to finish the ears, I'll apply some fresh clay to the backs of each framework for the ears that I previously created and blend those in accordingly. Once completed and cured, I'll apply some super glue to the armature of the ears and apply them to the previously drilled holes on the head. I'll use the same method I used when I attached the head and apply a small snake of clay around the base of each ear and blend those into the head and ears accordingly. I'll give this a quick cure before it's time to move on to the hands. For the hands, I'm going to be using cos clay. Normally, I'm using Sculpey, which when cured forms a harder plastic material, whereas cos clay maintains a more rubbery texture, which is perfect for fingers and things of the like, which are subject to be broken. This is a little bit more forgiving, and I think it's gonna work out perfectly for Ickes' fingers. From there, it's time to give it one last quick cure, and it's on to painting. Ooh, dinner time. Oh, fuck! Fuck her ass! Oh, God! Checking over our freshly baked little bunny monster, you can see that the fingers have some flexibility to them and a little bit of forgiveness for the painting process, which I'm sure we'll need. And speaking of the painting process, we're gonna begin with a base coat. One that I chose to be black for multiple reasons, and I refuse to admit whether I was wrong or right here. Mostly because I'm indecisive as to whether I like it or not, what matters is I'm happy with the end result. My thought process was to give a darker coat underneath, to which would provide some shading to the lighter purplish reddish coats on top. This worked, but it took quite a few coats to cover. And by quite a few coats, I mean many, many, many coats. Like, a lot of coats. All of the coats. And finally, once I depleted the world's supply of that particular color of paint, it's time to move on to the eyes and the teeth, where I can apply at least a beginning base coat for those. From there, I'll move on to paint the lips and the inner ears and then do it again with a color that actually works. With our lips and inner ear color corrected, I can then apply a dark wash to the inner ear for some shading and contrast before taking a lighter shade of yellow and then much like I did on the pumpkin, fanning out from the center to the outer edges to perform some natural shading as the paint thins. Moving on, I'll apply that same dark wash to the remainder of Ickes' body and his lips to bring out that fur texture and accentuate the cracks and grooves. From there, I'll cover the fur texture with a light gray dry brush to highlight that fur texture, and then move on to add the pupils to the eyeballs.
And with those peepers in place, it's time to move on to my favorite step and add some UV resin, cure it with my UV light, and really bring out the shine in Nikus's eyes. With the rest of the painting out of the way, it's time to add a matte varnish to protect that paint job, and then it's on to the base. Garbage! Oh, let's frolic in the mounds. Oh, let's do. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> now for the base, I decided to go with a super secret formula that I borrowed from north of the border using some hole filler, some dirt, and various paints, mixing it all up and slapping it onto the pedestal, a mixture that I feel will fit nicely for the garbage dump that Ickes will be calling home. I'll position Ickes on the platform, pressing him into the mixture, and then adding some dirt and rocks and pebbles along the way. With our dirty details in place, I can then go in and add some extras that I constructed along the way, as well as some various details, including some torn up aluminum foil and little pieces of plastic bag tucked into the mixture and poking out as if, you know, sticking out of the dirt at a dump. I'll then go in with some paint and age these up along the process. It's at this point that I realized with no previous planning whatsoever that the flock that I had purchased a while back and had on hand was going to fit perfectly here. And so I got the flock out and began applying it. I'm glad I made this decision in retrospect because it turned out pretty flocking awesome if you ask me. With all the garbage in place, I'll add a final coat of black to the bottom of the base. Before I go in, as previously mentioned, using some browns and oranges to age up the metal of the aluminum foil and add some darker washes to the plastic to darken up our garbage bags. I apply that same dark wash to some of the rocks and the soil before using super glue to secure some of our additions. To wrap it all up, we'll add some alcohol and go in and drop some watered down glue to hold everything in place. And with that, it's on to the showcase. Fresh out the box. Stop, look and watch. Ready yet? Get set. It's all that. Now before I go, I do want to take a moment just to thank you all for watching and especially for all the support that I received on the previous video for the pumpkin build. Uh, first video on the channel and the support has been outstanding. Uh, the growth on the channel has been phenomenal in just a matter of a couple weeks. Thank you guys so much, but most importantly, thank you again for watching, taking the time out of your day. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, it would mean the world to me to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this. Come back for more. We'd love to see you. But until then, y'all take care. We'll see you soon.